Welcome back. If you've been following this journey from the beginning, then I want you to know that you're greatly appreciated. If this is your first video, then welcome. This video will be the retelling of how I went from this to this. Anyways, grab that apple because we're about to learn how to make your first Maple Story bossing meal. It's apple seed. We started off our journey by using this mega character Burning Nader, which gives you two extra levels every time you level up until you reach level 150. This is going to speed up the leveling process tremendously. I also popped this trait boost potion so that I can reach level 30 charm and be able to use pocket items. This is going to be useful later on. I went ahead and applied my link skills. I recommend Elvin's Blessing which gives bonus EXP. For my Legion board, I'm prioritizing bonus EXP and crit rate in order to make leveling up faster. From level 70 to 100, I trained at the popular training spots that everyone goes to. From level 90 to 100, I recommend unaliving the security camera mini boss for tons of EXP. I reached level 100 and made my way to Zakum. Be sure to pop a rune or use a double EXP coupon for massive gains. I was able to get 9 free levels this way. At level 115, I farmed Pianus, which is a hidden boss that you can find in Aqua Road. I did this until around level 125. Level 130 to level 160, I continued training at popular maps such as Kerning Tower. I finally reached level 160 where I started my Brood Abyss prequest. You need to unalive Root Abyss 5 times in total to unlock Chaos Root Abyss. Now, Magic Miracle time came at a convenient time. Even though I told myself I wouldn't cheat by getting help from my other characters unless it was items that I can access myself on this bossing meal, I really didn't want to give up this opportunity that rarely came. I spent around 400 mil and was able to get some pretty decent stats on my emblem and secondary. Those should be like the first items you should cube. I reached level 170 and figured it was time to take on Von Leon, so that I can unlock his equips. This will be considered the first milestone in progression for my boss meal. I also fought Horntail in order to unlock his accessories which I will be using for the entirety of this playthrough. I continued leveling up and even got some really useful familiars. Familiars are great because they are free and grant some amazing stats. You can get 45% IED completely for free. At level 199, I started the Haven questline. Now you can legit get a free level by just skipping through dialogue for a minute or two. Once I completed the quest, I was able to reach level 200. Now the real fun begins. At level 200, I quickly completed the 5th job advancement and made my way to the Arcane River. Keep in mind, while all this was happening, I was still doing my daily Root Abyss runs and fighting Von Leon and Horntail in order to get their equips. I started working on my Vanishing Journey daily quest in order to level up my Arcane Symbol. It's also worth noting that daily quests are a great way to gain EXP. I'm gaining about a level a day just by doing daily quests and event missions. I went and fought Normal Magnus in order to unlock some useful accessories. Now, at the time of recording, it was Maple Story Ignition, which had so many minigames and quests that helped with leveling. I was able to level up mainly through this event and daily quest. To make passive income while slowly making gains, I am doing Ursus 3 times a day for around 100 mil a day. I also tried doing Maple Tour, which is like Monster Park, except instead of gaining EXP, you gain Misos. It just wasn't for me because you have to wait like a whole entire week in order to collect the full amount of misos that you would have earned from doing maple tour daily just not worth my time to be honest once i reached level 210 it was time to start thinking about the chaos bosses at this point i've already unlocked chaos root abyss which means i can now try to unlock some chaos root abyss equips i reworked my link and legion to better suit bossing for Link skills, my favorite is Fury Unleashed, which gives you boss damage percent. For Legion, I want to try to create a good balance between IED percent, boss, and crit damage. Since my IED was already very high, I prioritize crit damage, which is very useful. I went ahead and cubed all my current equips until I reached 6% dex on each equip. This is the minimum you would need to get and it's very easy to achieve. After doing so, I reached 6k dex, which is a great starting place to fight bosses. I completed the Afterlands questline in order to unlock these permanent totems. This will be a great boost to my stats, and for free. 
you can check out my guide on how I completed it. I also want to mention that there are some amazing item buffs that you can get to help with bossing. Monster Park potions are super easy to get and extremely helpful. I use these potions religiously when bossing and sometimes farming too. It was time to take on my first Chaos boss, Chaos Zakum. Chaos Zakum was not too bad of a fight mostly due to the fact that he is stationary. My burst was easy to land. It took about 4 minutes to unalive Zakum and the victory felt amazing. Next up was Hard Hilla. I was confident in this fight because Chaos Zakum is a lot harder than Hard Hilla is. This fight went faster than I expected. Like, way faster than I thought it was gonna be. Hard Hilla drops a free pet, which can be very handy for players who don't want to spend money on a pet. Now on to Chaos Pink Bean. This is by far one of my most hated boss fights mainly because of all the statics inflictions that Pink Bean will inflict on you. This makes the fight so frustrating if you don't have all cure potions. You also need to unalive Pink Bean 3 times and that is after you unalive the statues. Pink Bean does drop the Black Bean mark which is a pretty decent eye accessory. Pink Bean also drops the Pink Bean cup which is a pocket item. Remember earlier when I mentioned pocket item? I have about 6.2k decks at this point in the journey. I have my mind set out on Chaos Root Abyss, but I want to get a little bit stronger. The Ignition minigames are an amazing way to level up. I was able to reach level 215. I wasn't filming when this happened, but I actually lucked out so good and got this Dominator's Pendant from Normal Arcarium. Mules never fail! I also got this Event Heart to boost my stats a little bit more. Now it was time to fight Chaos Root Abyss. Chaos Root Abyss was the first set of bosses that I learned how to fight. It's actually what got me into bossing and wanting to learn how to solo boss. If you're new and want to learn bossing mechanics, Chaos Root Abyss is a great place to learn the fundamentals and practice. It was surprisingly not as hard as I thought. Wind Archers are overpowered. My least favorite Chaos Root Abyss boss is Peer. He has a hat switch mechanic that makes the fight a lot more tedious than it needs to be, and it's RNG based. After unaliving Chaos Root Abyss, I went ahead and got the CRA set and upgraded everything. I do want to mention that you're going to have to fight Chaos Vellum two times in order to unlock the CRA weapon. I continued my journey like usual, completing Ursus daily for Misos, doing my daily missions, and Ignition minigames to level up. My goal is to reach level 220 so that I can unlock more arcane symbols to boost my stats. This was also a great time to unlock Princess No. I'm going to need that Kana's ring for sure. I fought Normal Cygnus, which is an easy fight. I'm not going to be using any of the equips that she drops. I have to work on my node stones because I'm not too sure if I'll be able to defeat Princess No. I made some pretty big gains on my 5th drop skills. Princess No wasn't too big of a threat. There's a trick where you can leave the room when Princess No casts infinite flames which stuns you. Just click the red portal and exit the map and you can re-enter with no stun. This completely changed the game for me. I reached level 220 finally and received my Lachalan Arcane Symbol. I used some of my Ignition Coins to buy Lachalan Symbols to level it up. I now have 9k stat. It was time to take on Hard Magnus. <laughs> Hard 
Hard Magnus wasn't too bad. Honestly, he's one of my least favorite early game bosses to fight because why do the damn meteors do so much damage? I was able to unalive him and take his loot. I'm able to make about 1 billion misos a week from weekly bossing. I continued doing my usual routine plus weekly bossing in order to make misos. I'm upgrading my 5th drop skills and slowly working on making gains to my stat. On one of my hard Magnus runs, I was able to get this Tyrant Cloak, which is like a free level 17 star item since it comes with these amazing stats. It was time to take on Akechi. Now, this fight can get annoying, especially with how much he moves around the map. Akechi will also throw this attack at you where you enter a different dimension. Each time you get attacked, you will receive a stack, and if you cap out on the stacks, you'll get one hit KO. I just like to run back and forth to avoid getting hit. After defeating Akechi, I went right into Chaos Papalatus. I knew this fight was gonna be hard because I kinda struggle with this even with my other bossing meals. This fight is definitely more about dodging and spacing. The worst part of the fight are the two lasers. If they touch, then you will be one hit KO'd unless you cast an iframe. If you're able to defeat phase 1, then the rest of the fight should be no problem. After defeating Chaos Papalatus, I continued my usual gameplay. I ended up getting this Black Bean Mark finally, which is gonna be a great boost to my stats. With all of that out the way, it was time to take on Lotus and Damien.
And that concludes our Maple Story Bossing Meal journey. Thank you to everyone who's been following this series. We had a lot of fun along the way, and I'm so glad we were able to make it all the way to the end. Be sure to stick around because there will be more awesome content on the way. Finish eating that apple! Alright, here are the familiars, the equips, and the buffs that I used. Both of the familiars have 15% IED on them, and all of my equips have around 6% stat. If you would like to know more about these buffs, please check out my previous video where I discussed the buffs. And here is what my legion board looks like. I'm prioritizing mostly crit damage and boss damage. And here are my link skills. And here are my stats after the fight. We have about 10k stat with 91% IED, 99% crit, 112% crit damage, and almost 300% boss damage. 